think it was 10 seats, 10 tiles, eh? Right? Yeah, probably just keep doing it there because you just want a, a definite line. You want the features to come out. So our um, process for this project, which is um, putting backrest on the three seating that's going in the Mokari um, House and Art and Gardens. So what they're doing, they're making a, we made the parcel of Paris mould. They're going to carve it out, which is what they're doing here. They're designed and everything's put on there. They're carving it out. And then um, the next day, just to get clay and impress it into there, and it's going to come out as a mould. Yeah, I'm a community artist, and I love working um, with the community. Yeah, and I just like when you see something, um, then you your memories come up of that person, and you end up with this warm glow. <laughs> yeah, so that's the yeah, that's the um, outcome, you know. That's one lady done her title, and this lady is doing her children's title. And so this um, lady Anna, um, her mum is a, is a legend in this town and she um, passed on now, but she's related to all of us, as we all are, and um, she always wore a beanie. So I said, um, do a beanie to um, reflect your mum. So this is Anna doing a uh, mum and a beanie and different things that represent her mum. So there's, um, where's the children? Which one is the children? I'm oh, just mother and child here. Oh, your mother and child? So when you look at the final product, you're going to think, oh yeah, you know, the people that come from the descendants that come along, oh, my mum or Nan done that there. And it's going to make you feel, oh, proud, you know? And then significance to each little tile is going to be more um, significant. Like when I go and see this one here of Lady Ivy, I'm going to sit and remember her and all the things that she meant to me. You know, um, yeah. Um, Pablo Picasso said that art soothes the soul. I think he's just spot on with that. And, and a lot of a lot of the work I do is is not to compete with other artists. It's actually to 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 express the culture and the traditions and, and basically yeah, feel at peace with myself. The background of this painting is uh, Oyster Harbour, so it's actually looking towards Albany. So that's the original picture I took. There were two elders that were chasing the emu. They were depicted with their, their totems um, around them. And, but w with them as well, they also have these pack dogs. So they ended up chasing him. They found him underneath a tree, which is also depicted in the painting, and chased him towards uh, a vacant bit of land, which is now Oyster Harbour. There was no water in there. So basically, when the, when the dogs were allowed to uh, basically kill Emu, they dug Emu's heart into what is now Oyster Harbour. One of the other dogs um, created a channel which allowed all the water from uh, King George Sound into Oyster Harbour. And it, it sort of trapped Emu's heart into the ground. It, it's still a living, breathing entity living in that because his heart's still buried there. So I've still got a fair bit to do. Um, I'm still just finishing off these sort of splash effects. I'll end up keep coming up here with a little bit more purple. It's not my legacy, it's these guys' legacy. It's got, it's got nothing to do with me. I'm just reinterpreting um, what they've taught me and, and how I'm connected to it. We still have our basic way of living. We take our kids back out onto country especially when it's summer and spring and we teach them about bush tucker and we, all our local sites. We go and clean out yammers and we do lots of things like that and go hunting and teach little kids how to make dampers. But you've got to do it, otherwise you're going to lose it. There wasn't a lot of room to actually put a table 
which was is usually covered. I've cleaned it today, so there you go. I like it out here, it's good. Got the fire. Can have a glass of wine, cup of tea, whatever. I just love plants, so yeah. I I just think it's um it's a bit of knowledge that a lot of people have lost. So I think it's really good doing projects like this and showing people how we feel about the plants. You know, why plants are important to Aboriginal people, why culture is important. Um, I think it just helps them to understand us better. Um, a lot of the plants that we use do have medicinal um, purposes. So, um, yeah, and that information is sort of passed down. It's intergenerational knowledge transfer, so that happens. Um, and when we lead towards such a westernised life, we lose that. Um, and it's sad for some people if you, if you can't at least teach your kids about plants or teach your kids about country, because then if you don't do that, then they don't teach their kids. And then they definitely don't teach their kids because they don't know language, they don't know about stories, they don't know about plant use, they don't know about you know, the way we used to live. So this is one of mine. Um, and this I actually entered into the NAIDOC poster competition this year. So I don't think it did very well. I think they have like hundreds and hundreds of, of um, entries, but that was one that I did. So that's pretty much my representation of Voice Tree Truth. Um, so yeah, so I've sent that off. Um, what else do I want? I don't have much here though. Uh, so smaller pieces. So I'm doing a set of four, so they'll all be um, put together. I'll eventually find a design that I like, <laughs> then transfer it onto the actual art piece that's for the city. I'm on my final piece now, but these ones are a bit different to the the other pieces that I've done. I only started painting about a couple of years ago. Uh, my children insisted that I do some painting and the boys were like so happy because we did it together, like a joint process. They put the handprints on, but I actually didn't think I was a very good artist at all. And I uploaded it to Facebook and I got really positive feedback and then I was like, oh, maybe it's something I should keep doing and growing with. So, yeah, that kind of just opened the door. Yeah, if it was just art, I definitely think the self-doubt would have made me be like, oh, my God, I can't draw. But because it's bigger than art, I'm like, I have to do this. I have children that need to be proud and need to see their mum be so proud and go out into the world and be like, I'm an artist. Here, this is what I can show you, this is what I can teach you about my culture. And I guess it's a way to preserve it as well. Like it's preserving culture through art. And yeah, the self-doubt could never stop me from wanting to do that. So this season is uh, Duran. And that's April, May when the weather becomes a lot cooler and the foods that we would hunt would be the uh, reptiles and the yucca, long-necked turtle, which is why I've drawn them. I also love long-necked turtles. I have such a strong connection with them. Um, I'm Noongar, which means I can only paint the animals that are native to down here. So they're heavily like seen throughout my paintings. And then this one's Birak. And I used a snake to depict uh, the heats coming out so the snakes would come out of hibernation and be quite present. So we would have to be really wary so we'd know tiger snakes and all those kind of scary animals <laughs> would come out. And yeah, I kind of put that with the circular motions, the meetings and watching out for the snake as he moves across the land. 
I kind of feel like it's really important to acknowledge our seasons, my people's seasons, because one, they make a lot more sense, but they're related to us and it's important for the younger generation to learn this and this will be kind of set permanently around Makare. Um, so children will see this and start to learn and I think it was really important, so I was really honoured to be able to do the art pieces for this project and especially to be able to bring light and educate people around the seasons.